Hello, and welcome to Serverless 101. My name is Eric Johnson, and I'm a principal developer advocate for Serverless at AWS. Serverless 101 is a video series to help you get acquainted with the AWS services that are serverless. In this video, I cover Amazon EventBridge. We'll talk about what it does and when you should use it. Let's get started. Amazon EventBridge is a serverless event bus that makes it easier to build event-driven applications at scale using events generated from your applications, integrated software as a service, or SaaS applications, and AWS services. Phew, that's a bit of a mouthful. Let's take some time to unpack this. First of all, let's make sure we all agree on what an event is. An event is a record of an action that has happened in the past. In this context, it is represented as a JSON object that contains data from the event and metadata about the event. For example, if someone saves a file to Amazon S3, an event is created containing the bucket the file was saved to and the key or name of the file. It will also contain data about when it was saved, the size of the file, and other metadata that helps developers to understand the event. Another example would be someone pushing an IoT button. The event will contain information like when the button was clicked, the type of click, single, double, or long click, and maybe the location of the button. Events can come from many different sources and can look very different from each other. Okay, second, let's define an event bus. An event bus can ingest many different events from many different locations. As the events enter the bus, they remain on the bus for a configured period of time. These events can come from external SaaS services like Salesforce or Zendesk. They can come from internal AWS services like Amazon S3 or AWS CloudWatch. Or they can come from custom applications that you are building. Okay, you might be asking, now that we have all these events on the bus, how can we use them? Amazon EventBridge allows you to set up rules. These rules are data patterns that match some or all of the events on a bus. EventBridge evaluates each event against each rule you create. If the rule does not apply, the event is ignored by that rule. If the rule does apply, then EventBridge will send a copy of that event to a configured target. Either way, the event remains on the bus to be evaluated by other rules. Using EventBridge, data can be sent to any number of targets. For example, a common pattern is to invoke an AWS step function workflow. When a rule targeting a step function workflow matches an event in the EventBridge bus, the workflow is invoked directly by the EventBridge service, and the event is passed in as the input. Using this pattern, developers can build asynchronous event-driven applications using real-time data. Developers are also able to decouple their applications to increase application reliability. So let me explain that. When designing applications, even using serverless, developers can often make the mistake of tightly coupling their applications. For example, I have two Lambda functions. One handles payments and the other handles subscriptions. It would be very easy for my application to first take the payment using the first Lambda function, then the first Lambda function calls the second Lambda function to create the subscription. By doing it this way, I have tightly coupled this portion of my application. If my subscription fails, then there's a chance the payment process might get messed up as well. This causes my application to be brittle. A better option is for the payment service to drop a request on the EventBridge bus requesting a subscription to be created. If the subscription Lambda function fails or is unavailable, the payment Lambda function can still go about its business. This brings about another feature of Amazon EventBridge. If a target service fails, EventBridge can be configured to retry after a certain period of time. If the process still continues to fail, the event can be dropped into a dead letter queue for troubleshooting as needed. If you have already watched the Serverless 101 series installment for Amazon SQS, you might be asking, how does this differ from SQS? Actually, quite a bit. SQS is designed to ingest many events as well. However, they are generally processed in a batch and are removed from the queue after the event is successfully processed. EventBridge events, on the other hand, are handled one at a time and can match multiple rules and be delivered to multiple targets in their lifetime on the bus. 
Okay, here's one more fun fact. If you have an AWS account now, then you already have an EventBridge bus working for you. Every AWS account has a default bus that can be used to pass event data from AWS services. You can use the default bus for your custom events or create a separate custom bus to isolate incoming events. One final thought on EventBridge before we go. In addition to collecting events and distributing them to targets based on your rules, EventBridge also has a schema registry that collects and stores event patterns. This is helpful as a developer to understand what service events, SaaS events, or even your own custom events look like. This has been a high-level overview of Amazon EventBridge. I encourage you to dig into the individual features of EventBridge to make it work well for you. For more information about Amazon EventBridge and other videos in the Serverless 101 series, follow this QR code. Again, my name is Eric Johnson, and you can connect with me at EDJGeek on Twitter. Thank you.